All right. The next speaker is uh, Derek from uh, Hawkeye 360, and he'll be talking about moment-based automatic modulation classification. Check, one, two. Hello. So we're going to talk about moment-based automatic modulation classification. If your eyes glazed over, go get some coffee. It's OK. Just like last year, it's fine. I have thick skin. Uh, but for the few of you that will be paying attention, uh, this didn't make it into the uh, technical proceedings this year. Uh, I couldn't get anything written up in time for submission. So uh, if you miss anything and you want slides or anything like that afterwards, just come find me. Uh, I don't smile, but I'm sort of friendly, I promise. Um, so yeah, I'm Derek. Uh, Bob McGuire out there is uh, my PhD advisor. He will probably be my PhD advisor for the next 10 years. Um, I'm from Hawkeye 360, and the research is done through the VT Hume Center. Uh, so last year, I came and talked about uh, ModRec, as I so affectionately call it. Um, I put a wall of text of math in a LaTeX Beamer format. This year, we've gone to a PowerPoint kind of thing, so hopefully it'll be a little nicer. Uh, but basically, uh, we showed that there's um, comparable performance uh, between moment-based uh, ModRec uh, and likelihood-based approaches. Um, and you can dig into the paper from last year if you want to. Um, basically, the, the biggest contribution in my mind is that we, we linked the moments and cross moments of input symbols uh, to a Hilbert space using complex domain Gram-Charlier series, uh, which you can think of as like a Fourier analysis expansion of uh, probability density functions. That was kind of a mouthful. Uh, don't worry about it, right? Uh, at the end of the paper last year, I, I said, finally, uh, these authors, me and Bob, uh, fully expect that these techniques can be applied with slight modification and an appropriate decrease in performance uh, directly to pre-receiver symbols. Um, if that was something that was important to you, uh, this is what that talk is. Um, so let's just uh, do a quick overview of what happened last year. Basically. Uh, we had a match filter receiver, and we took the output of that. And so what that means is we had uh, time synchronized, frequency synchronized, and probably phase synchronized, uh, to some extent, symbols coming out of this uh, receiver, magic receiver, black box. And the, the modulation recognition system that I, I studied uh, basically took the moments of this. So ex expected value of the symbol, symbol squared, uh, symbol times the complex conjugate, those kinds of things, right? Uh, we related it to all the mathy stuff. And the cool thing was that these output features, uh, when we combined all of these moments in particular ways, uh, they all sat in a nice Euclidean space so we could tell how close two different modulations were to one another. Um, that got me really excited. And last year, I was like, this is awesome. You might not think it's awesome, but that's OK. And so yeah. Uh, then we did a, a discriminative, is that the, discriminative deep neural network. Uh, basically, these, these Euclidean spaces of modulations, these clusters, uh, they kind of get fuzzy. They kind of wrap around each other. Uh, it's a very highly dimensional space. I think it was about 30 or 40 dimensions. Uh, and so we used a deep neural network just to implement a, a nonlinear decision region slicer kind of thing. Uh, so it would output soft decisions as to what modulation uh, it thought an input vector belonged to. Um, we used some uh, simulation to train it, and uh, that was kind of last year's stuff. And so performance here, we have a, a graph at various uh, input lengths. Uh, the most important thing is that the green lines are pretty close to the blue lines, which were the two uh, methods that we were uh, looking at. The green is a likelihood-based stuff, and so we don't expect to do much better than that. And the blue was the moment-based. Um, so yeah, the utility was kind of limited, right? If you wanted to do modulation recognition, but you, uh, you, know, you didn't want to have to have a match filter before it, uh, you couldn't use what we did last year. Uh, also, because of the one sample per symbol constraint, the, the match filter receiver decimated, all right? Uh, that moment-based method is really limited to classifying different quams and phase and amplitude modulations. Uh, it had no ability to examine the pulse shapes, uh, but more importantly, it would probably fail utterly against frequency shift king, right? You can imagine the constellation of a frequency shift 
king modem is just a big circle, right? And so, you know, the moment-based stuff might say, oh, it's a circle, and that's all you get. Uh, some of you might, if you think down the, the road a little bit, too, uh, a little bit further, it's kind of like a chicken and egg problem, right? The moment-based uh, system operates on post-receiver symbols, but you don't know what the receiver should be until you know what the modulation is. All the linear modulations have reasonably similar uh, receivers, but the FSK is not so much. And so, uh, we extend the, the old system by uh, performing the classification in the pre-receiver domain. Uh, we're gonna assume prior knowledge of the baud rate and the SNR, but not frequency offset. Uh, and so in order to mitigate that CFO, uh, we introduce a delay conjugate multiply term. Uh, basically, we'll take one sample, delay it by a symbol period, for example, uh, conjugate and multiply it against the current symbol or sample. Uh, that turns uh, frequency offsets into phase offsets and makes the processing really nice. Uh, so I'll call this DCM, moment-based mod rec. Um, and if you've uh, ever studied cyclostationary uh, analysis or cyclo feature detector kind of things, uh, this extends the moment-based work in that direction. Uh, we'll take a look at the, you know, the lag product thing in just a little bit. Uh, but there's plenty of good references out there, and some of the ones I really looked into recently uh, were by Chad Spooner uh, in 1994. Uh, so not too much math, just really quickly. The, the moment-based formulation uh, basically just treated input symbols as independent random variables. Uh, the cross moments uh, we calculated, we did this whole gram shirley series expansion thing. Uh, long story short, the probability density functions, which correspond to the constellations of our modulations, so you can think BPSK, you can think QAMs, right? Um, the probability density function associated with the, the constellations uh, could be estimated, approximated by these cross moments. And so the, the big H's in the expectation and outside are uh, Hermit functions, uh, polynomials. Uh, they're complex valued, and there's a bunch of uh, different ones. Uh, here's some examples. Uh, probably the most interesting thing one, uh, interesting one is the H21 term. It's got a z squared and a z conjugate in there. And so you can see that you can combine all these guys. They're all orthogonal. Uh, and you can compute distances. That's what this slide is about. Uh, so that Euclidean distance is kind of how I, I came up with the term rigorous moment-based uh, mod rec last year. So a significant trade-off in the old formulation is that there's no time dependence captured in, in anything, right? All the input samples and symbols were considered independent. Uh, in order to classify the various FSKs, we'd like to know how many different levels there are and how much frequency changes in, there are in between each uh, symbol. And so uh, we can do that delay conjugate multiply operation to kind of achieve this, right? Um, and the idea here is that we're just gonna do this DCM and then put the results of that straight into the same old system as last year. So we get this Z tilde. Uh, when you do that on something that has two samples per symbol, uh, you get something that looks like these little scatter plots. So on the left, you'll have a QPSK. Um, the constellation looks kind of skewed to the right, and that's actually probably most likely 99% caused by the, the pulse shape in there. There's a short time dependency uh, that, that, that causes that. Um, you can see the zero crossings at zero, and you see the four constellation points corresponding to different phases of different symbols, right? On the right-hand side, uh, there's GMSK with a BT of 0 0.5. Uh, when you do two samples per symbol, you'll see the inner symbol interference terms and the, the, uh, the in-between offcut samples as well. Now, one thing, one disadvantage of doing everything in the pre-receiver domain is that you don't have the match filter to recover all of your SNR, right? Uh, and so one way we can try to mitigate that is by using a blind equalizer, such as the constant modulus algorithm. And what happens is all of the constellation points belonging to the, the actual symbols kind of tighten up. 
uh, and it leaves the FSKs alone, which is pretty cool. So if you do the eye doctor thing, we can go, you know, A, B, A, B, which one's better, right? And so yeah, we do the DCM, we maybe do a CMA, and uh, we're gonna crank it into the old stuff. Uh, there's one quick side note, uh, the cyclostationary analysis uh, bit, you can connect it using the, the delay product uh, term. And um, the delay product, from what I understand, plays a huge role in a lot of the analysis that's been done over the years. And so some of the future work for me is to really explore how tight is that connection between the moments and the cyclostationary features. Uh, what are the things that we're missing out on from this, this approach? And uh, what are the things that we might be adding on to the other? Uh, and my guess is that it's going to be fairly equivalent between the two approaches. Uh, but we'll see. That's, that's on me to prove, I guess, right? So we did some experiments, uh, basically the same as last year. Uh, generated a, a ton of uh, signals, sampled at two samples per symbol. Uh, we had an optional CMA equalizer up front. We did that delay conjugate multiply by two, and then cranked it through the same system, trained the neural network, uh, extracted all those moments. The deep neural network got a little bit bigger this year. I think it just needed a little bit more capacity. Uh, and the experiments we ran it against, uh, 10 different modulations. Um, two ASK, which is on-off keying, uh, four level amplitude shifts, uh, BPSK, QPSK, 8PSK, 16 QAM, uh, rectangular pulse-shaped 2FSK and 4FSK, uh, GFSK and GMSK. So we had a, you know, a nice little mix. Uh, the, the typical trouble spot in this is usually the 8PSK relationship between QPSK and 16 QAM. Um, we also added some random time offsets. So uh, the, especially the, 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 QP, the PSKs and QAMs, um, we could be sampling everything at, for example, a quarter of a sample off, half a sample off. Um, and that probably threw off that delay conjugate multiply without the CMA off by a lot. And then we also added some frequency offsets there, just uniform random uh, within a quarter baud rate of, uh, of zero. We put in 500 samples from each uh, generated signal. And then after we trained, uh, about 1,000 of each modulation was kind of the test set that I'll present uh, the confusion matrix at the end. And so the, the results were uh, fairly good. Um, up above maybe 12, 13, 14 dB of SNR. Uh, that's ESNO. Um, we had nearly 100% classification. There's still some, some, some outliers in there. Uh, and this was for the CMA flavor of the, the new classifier. Uh, the DCM had some problems, and I think that that's related to the time offsets, uh, but I really have to dig into the data. Uh, and we have some confusion matrices here. At 20 dB, uh, plenty of good results. At 10 dB, it starts to get a little fuzzy in the, the 8 PSK region. And the, the amplitude shift keys uh, had some problems too, and I have to look into that. Uh, with the DCM only flavor, uh, same kind of thing. And at 10 dB, things kind of fall apart. So, very simple extension. Uh, we extended the one sample per symbol, moment based mod rec, uh, into the pre receiver domain. Uh, the goal of all of this is to really have a computationally efficient mod rec algorithm. Uh, and so that's kind of where we're approaching from the, 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 the easy side, and we're probably going to work towards the cyclostationary features and, and figure out how they all relate. Uh, the main cost of this extension was really just the SNR loss. Uh, I think it's about 6 dB more of SNR that you really require to, to maintain some kind of similar performance. Uh, but now we get to classify FSKs. So if that's something interesting to you, then uh, come let me know. I can give you the, the slides and some, some PDFs. Uh, that delay conjugate multiply was really introduced to mitigate carrier frequency offset. Uh, it's a very nonlinear operation, but it's very effective. Uh, and the CMA was really just used to tighten up constellation points and uh, sharpen things up for the classifier. Uh, so yeah, with that, an any questions? There's one back there.
Hey, um, so I'm just wondering, you brought up the Euclidean space uh, modeling, you assumed, and the metric that went along with that. Have you looked into possibly modeling this on a manifold and using an appropriate metric on the manifold to see if it maybe tightens this up? That sounds hard. <laughs> you use words it is that, hard. You use words that I don't really understand. Bob, can you like help me with that? <laughs> provide better separation between things that are now closer together. He's got a point, and we need to look into some Riemannian geometry soon. <laughs> oh, man, I think you just made my PhD harder, man. <laughs> now, some of the feature approaches I might try to take is to, to do that distance. Uh, instead of doing distance calculations, um, kind of cast it back into a Bayesian uh, uh, kind of uh, system. Uh, so hopefully I won't have to do too many things like that to, to really get the most performance out of everything. But yeah, I guess I have to read up on manifolds now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All right. Round of applause. All right. Okay, we're a little bit ahead, so we're going to go really slowly, um, so I don't get too far off track. Um, is the yeah. <laughs>